So let's start with the RNA viruses. Uh, in DNA viruses, if you remember, we spoke about what? Happy. Happy belongs to DNA virus. Yeah, happy unit. H for herpes and another H for HBA, A for adeno and three Ps, you know, pox, papilloma, parvoviruses. They are DNA. Apart from that, all other viruses are RNA viruses. So in RNA viruses, uh, let's start with hepatitis virus. Definitely hepatitis virus has good weightage uh, because it is like all these five viruses are important. Hepatitis 5, A, B, C, D, E. And easily questions can be asked. Okay. So let's start. Not waste the time. So when we talk about hepatitis virus, you know, hepatitis means it's affecting the liver. All the viruses which are affecting the liver, they are hepatitis viruses, right? So now let's start. Uh, hepatitis A, B, C, D, E. Common. We have other also G and uh, some variants are there, but uh, the most important are five. Okay. From uh, FMG point of uh, view. So now families, I'm sure you guys must be knowing this already. Which is that family, HIV, this, this asked many times. Hepatitis A virus belongs to which which one? Which one, if you remember? Remember? Nowadays, what you do? Always take a A1 picture. You know, you always take A1 pics. A1 pics. These days. That means A for A belongs to picornavirus. Picornavirus. Okay. Got it? Picornavirus. So that is a question can be asked, right? Picornavirus. Yeah. Uh, so you can also remember Picorna was a naked virus. So naked, uh, what we said, naked, who is naked? Crappy people are naked. So in that, P, P, crap, P stands for Picorna. For pigs, you go naked. Okay. So remember, so this was a question asked. Okay, Picorna, A for Picorna virus. Now, what about the B? B virus, uh, if you remember, all our RNA viruses except hepatitis B, this is the, among hepatitis virus, this is the only which one? DNA virus. Rest all are RNA. This is the only DNA virus. Also question. That's what in happy it comes. In happy one of the H is this one. You remember? This is the only one. Only DNA virus. So the name itself has a clue for you. What? Which virus? Uh, hepatitis belong to which family? Hep DNA virus. Hep DNA virus. Okay. So you will not get confused because this is the only DNA virus. So hepatitis B is Hep DNA virus. Also question. Asked. C. How to remember C? I love chocolate flavor. I love choco flavor. Choco flavor. So C for C, F for Flavi virus. So C belongs to Flavi virus. Flavi virus. Repeatedly asked question. This is also repeatedly asked question. Okay. And D. D doesn't have anything because you know D always goes with the B co infection to cause infection, right? It causes infection with B only. It can't do alone. E. E is. Easy. Microbiology is easy. Subject, if you read with me. Okay. E, C, E, C. Okay. It's a shortcut. So, C for calcivirus. E belongs to calcivirus. If you remember, calci also naked. Calcivirus is also naked virus, right? Crap, crappy people. Crappy calcivirus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, let's go. Under calci came, uh, Norwalk. Norwalk causes diarrhea, if you remember. Okay. And E also belongs to calcivirus. So these are all our questions. Now the roots. Roots are important because uh, you know there is uh, uh, which are the roots you know for hepatitis A and E virus they have which root? If you are saying fecal oral root then you are right. Okay. Fecal oral root. Fecal oral. Fecal oral. A and E are fecal oral. Fecal oral root. Very good. Question. Question. Also can be asked question. A lot of question can be asked in hepatitis alone. So it's easy to remember also. Don't forget. Okay. And B, C, D. They are somewhat similar. B, if you take the most common root is sex. Sex is the most common root. Followed by sex root is the blood transfusion and parenteral. Parenteral and vertical. In vertical, this has the highest chance of transmission. The hepatitis B virus. Okay. The risk is almost 90 percent. We'll talk about it. So remember the most common root is sex. But for C and D, it is parenteral root. Parenteral. Okay. Parental means it could be IV drug or injecting, you know, those way. So that is the parental root. Okay. So C and D, parental root is the most common one. And of course, uh, followed by uh, C, blood transmission also. Right. Okay. Now, what about fulminant? Which one has a fulminant? Which causes the fulminant? The fulminant, uh, it is caused, uh, if you remember, 
every other viruses, uh, usually the fulfillment rate in adults normally when someone is infected, it's 0.1 or 1 percentage only. But two people are very dangerous. Fulminant without fulfillment. One is your hepatitis D virus. It has nearly 20 percentage of fulminancy. That is most fulminant. I would say overall most fulminant. If there's which is the most fulminant virus, it is hepatitis D virus. D for dangerous. Okay, D for dangerous. That's what fulminant. Danger, dangerous, fulminant. Okay. So if you have someone has fulminant, the most dangerous. One. But if the question is pregnancy, in pregnancy, which is most common, hepatitis E virus is the most fulminant. E V is the most fulminant. Fulminant. Remember. Okay. Most fulminant one in hepatitis. Okay. Right. Now, now let's go to the next one. What about the chronicity? When you talk about chronicity, forget about these other things. The chronicity is common in hepatitis B and hepatitis C. But maximum is this one, hepatitis C virus. Both are chronicity and cirrhosis. Both are high in hepatitis C virus. Though it is seen in hepatitis B virus also, but maximum in hepatitis C virus is question. Okay, right. Next, oncogenicity. When you talk about the oncogenicity, what can you say? Oncogenicity potential is high only in hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus. That's it. Other things, they don't have chronicity. They don't cause oncogenicity. Okay, and this is just one of the cancers that can be cured by vaccination, like for hepatitis B virus also, which can be cured by vaccination. Hep sorry, HPV, HPV, human papilloma virus, which causes cervical cancer, and the other one is hepatitis B virus, which can be easily uh, cured by vaccination. Okay, right. Now, now interpretations. Now, for acute hepatitis, we, we can have some uh, interpretation for acute hepatitis. So, these are the uh, some uh, questions can be asked. Acute hepatitis caused by which virus? Okay, acute hepatitis. So, you know, whenever there is acute, you know that always when there's acute, it means you have IgM increase. Whenever it is chronic, you know what it is? It is IgG. You know that G and C look similar. C, G, similar. That's what? It's chronic. G for chronic and acute means IgM. Yeah, you know that. Now, let's talk about the uh, interpretation. So, now a patient coming, patient has, you know, symptom of hepatitis, you know, it's usually jointers, vomiting, abdominal pain, myalgia, uh, you know, swelling, sometimes uh, uh, hepatomegaly, all these symptoms are common in a hepatitis patient. So, when you do a blood test, you do a panel, you do the hepatitis virus panel, and in that panel, suppose, if only IgM, IgM, HAV antibody comes positive, right? Rest all come negative. Then, it's very easy. IgM, so, it is acute. And of course, it was hepatitis A virus. So, acute hepatitis, acute hepatitis A virus. Diagnosis simply acute hepatitis A virus. Okay, or acute A hepatitis virus. Next case. A is negative, but HPS AG is positive. The antigen is positive. We will talk about that in detail. And also, IgM, IgM positive. That means, again, IgM, M is again acute. So, it is acute hepatitis B virus, right? Now, anti-HCV. Anti-HCV, for this, there is no IgM, IgG. If anti-HCV comes positive, that is simply acute hepatitis C virus. Very simple. This is side of interpretation. Okay, very easy interpretation. So, this is for your uh, the A, 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 this is this one for B, and then this one for C. We have different, I mean, to say the popular different diagnosis is just based on these things. Okay, now, let's go to the uh, transmission. When you talk about the transmission rate, uh, the transmission rate, in needle prick injury, through the needle prick injury, there is 30% chance of getting hepatitis B virus. And if it, through, uh, if it is HCV, 3%. But for HIV, it's 0.3%. It's a rule of three. You can say rule of three. Okay, for needle prick. But important is vertical. They can ask this also. So they can ask this question. But in vertical transmission, Hepatitis B virus has 90% transmission rate, where your HIV has only 30%. That could be a question. That's what I say. Vertical, this is very high risk. Mother to child. Vertical means mother to child. Highest hepatitis B. That's what vaccinations are making very, uh, these days are very important mandatory. Okay. So, we are just thinking, talking only about the transmission rate, risk rate. Okay. That's it. So, see, not that much. We are not going to talk here much in the vertical. Okay. So, now next. Uh, so, this is the which virus. Now, when someone gives you this picture and tell you to identify, you know, take this, they give this picture and then they tell you to identify which is this. What is this? This is a, this is our three, three forms are there. This is sphere form, filament form, Danny particle. 
So which topic it should be? It should be this now. Hepatitis B virus, HBV. We are going to talk about HBV in detail. Yeah, because the diagnostic part is very important based on the antigen types of antigen antibody only we are making the diagnosis. So we have to know this. So first one is pure form and filamentous form. These two, we see, they just have only the outer, yes, they have only the yes uh, antigen. They have only the outer layer, yes antigen. Nothing is there inside. Inside, you don't have anything. So, HBS, AG is the only thing from, so they're not matching. And uh, overall, this is the most common form. Not significant, but most common form. But the most important is Danny particle. The complete hepatitis B virus particle is Danny particle. Though it is very less, but this is the one which is causing all your hepatitis infection, Danny particle. So, three antigens are important. What are the three antigens? The outermost one is your surface antigen, number one. Number one, okay, surface antigen. And next to surface antigen is your E, uh, e antigen. So, E is, uh, E is, they have, uh, they have different names here, actually. So, the next, the uh, inside the E would be the, there will be E antigen. E antigen, number two, E antigen. And then, Next, innermost one is your, which one you are? Core antigen. That is C, right? So, we S antigen, E antigen, core antigen. Okay. This is the important antigens we have. Now, we are going to talk about this. Okay. A surface, yes for surface. E is just E and C is core. Okay. So, they are the important antigens we are going to talk about. So, hepatitis B virus, other name is, I told you, they will ask you frequently, this question will be asked. So, what is the other name for this? That is the Danny particle. Don't forget, Danny particle. Because you're talking about Danny particle, do you remember what is the Danish strain? What is the Danish strain? Where, where Danish 133, only remember where, for vaccination of which one? If someone is saying the BCG, you guys are awesome. BCG for TB. For tuberculosis, for tuberculosis vaccine, it is made from Danish 133. Okay. Right. Now, of course, and if we talk about Danish, then I can't forget the diphtheria. Diphtheria, which was the strain used for diphtheria. DPT means diphtheria, of course, especially. It says Park Williams. Very good. Park Williams diphtheria. Park Williams strain for diphtheria. Danish 133 for BCG, TB vaccine. Okay. Right. Now, let's go. Uh, we already discussed this. Hespherical is the most common one. Then the tubular form, where only uh, HBS, AG is present, nothing is present. So now, important is three antigens we have already. Yes, E, and C. As I told you, the outermost, yes, yes means surface antigen. This is the surface antigen. Other name is Australian. That was a question frequently asked. Australian antigen. Question, question, question. Okay. So surface antigen. Australian is a surface antigen. That was the question, surface antigen. So, this is the first marker. Because it is outside, you're understanding, right, what I'm saying. Because I told you, we have three antigens, no, like this. So, the outermost one is the surface antigen, right? This is E and this is C, core. So, the surface is the outermost one. So, that's what, this is the first marker. Even whenever you're getting infection, hepatitis B infection, the first marker you can detect in the blood is HBS, AG, right? Now, when HPS AG is positive means, when a blood, if HPS, HPS AG positive means, that means the infection is present. Just the infection is present. You don't know it's acute or you don't know it is uh, acute or chronic, but you can just simply say infection is present. Hepatitis B virus, the infection, HB infection is present. That's it. That means if the antibody is formed, what you would say? It means patient is already recovered, right? It's very simple. HPV is just let me tell about the grow with patient hey. But patient to HPS AG nahi, uh, 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 but patient to antibody to HPS positive argue to the mother patient has recovered. Recovered or vaccinated. Recovered or vaccinated. Okay, got it. Question, question. So interpretation is important. Remember, yes means surface, present means infection is present. Yes, yes, yes or no. See, yes means yes. Just you say yes means. Yes or no. Bus. Infection hey or nay. Bus. Yes or no. That, but that's it. Antibody of your recovered or vaccinated. Very simple. It's not easy. Okay. S means yes or no. Bus. Use your surface antigen to AE common or kuch nahi. It will say whether infection is present. Yes or no. Bus. Huh? Now E. E means, uh, I always like the word E because E is always means enemy. Right? Hey, this is not the real name. I'm just giving you a clue. Okay. 
enemy enemy means enemy sare tem bad hota hai right enemy is always bad if it is bad means what infectivity is high infectivity is high like you know our enemy china pakistan or enemies so that means you know they are bad that means the infectivity is very high infectivity is very high pathogenicity also very high very high infectivity is very high pathogenicity is very high so uh, what we can say infectivity and pathogenicity are replication also very high getting it okay so infectivity is high pathogenicity is high replication is also very high so then if your antigen is positive a pura aata hai okay infectivity pathogenicity replicity severity everything is high if this one okay this one but already antibody is formed then what you will say everything is low infectivity is low pathogenicity is low severity is low replication is low got it that's it very simple infectivity is low pathogenicity is low severity is low replication is low bas that's it okay so this is the interpretation very simple e for enemy our enemies you take anybody you want any our enemy your own enemy our country enemy whatever enemies are always bad so infectivity jyada hota hai pathogenicity jyada hota hai severity jyada hota hai replication jyada hota hai but if already antibody is formed then everything is low bas theek hai that's what interpretation you must know really this is important in your future also for examination purpose also and for later on treatment purpose you will face a lot of patient you know, in any field surgery medicine whatever department you are because a lot of patients are going to come in screening they're going to show this uh, hepatitis b virus positive then you have to think how to diagnose it whether the patient is acute or chronic or recovered or vaccinated everything depends on this interpretation only okay yeah so please cut it uh be careful with this topic it's very important and see see how to remember see c means what c for chronic c means chronic that means c will say chronic or acute infection acute or chronic ye bata dega aapko you understand yes for surface antigen yes for yes or no infection is yes or infection is no bas antigen antibody yes or no bas e for enemy e ka antigen hai to e is enemy so sab jyada hota infection bhi jyada pathogen se jyada replication jyada everything is jyada but if antibody is formed to e means everything is come 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 infection become replication replication is come pathogen become severity come got it very simple c ka just says it's acute or chronic how to interpret before that one important thing there is one thing which is useless for us hbc core cosi for core uh, this is short cut to remember it's chronic or acute so core antigen it is not present in blood that's what it is not present in blood so it is useless it's not helpful it's not helpful for diagnosis don't forget so it is useless you can hbc antigen of kosh mein nahi aayega phir bhi aayega bhi this is useless c antigen is because it is inside if you remember humne bola tha it is core it is inside so core wala inside hai to it takes it will not come out in the blood so you will not find it but what will be formed antibody to hb ag hbc ag is formed so how do you interpret if antibody is formed that antibody could be igm or igg so again that's what i'm saying when you talk about core c you can say core ka antibody formed and if it is g chronic and if it is m acute you know this very well so okay so c says about c is core c tells about chronicity either acute or chronic chronicity acute or chronic okay very simple now let's go to the interpretation if you are able to answer this interpretation means you are like wow you know so it means you are definitely in a uh, good criteria of good chance of fmg student you are in a very great chance of passing this exam i can assure you okay so come here now let's see uh, first case Uh, this patient the same uh, history same the patient has jointers patient have you know jointers in the sclera palm tongue whatever and patient has uh, swelling abdominal swelling abdominal pain weakness weight loss hepatitis b pneumonia all symptoms he comes so then you put for the hepatitis viral panel to send for the test so when you do the test and these things are coming you are doing elisa test for uh, these are elisa tests only in elisa the first case the first case only hb is ag is positive and rest all are negative so that means what just infection is present the pressure the patient is just having hepatitis b infection just present this that means or it could be recent also you can say recent also but not acute just a recent infection or just infection is there 
we don't know what happened. Okay. Now, next case. This is the first case. Second case, the patient HPSH is positive. That means infection is present. Order may join there. Okay, infection is present. Then A antibody is not Anti-HBC are there. Anti-HBCC means we told it talks about chronicity. C talks about chronicity. So IgM are there. That means it is acute, acute hepatitis. Next E. E tells about what? Severity. E means it tells about the severity. Severity hai or nay, right? Severity. So HBE antigen hai. That means it is in severity is very high, replicacy is very high, everything is high. Severity. Severity is high, pathogenicity is high, replicity is high, everything is high. So what is the interpretation here? What are you going to write here? So what I'm going to write here is I'm going to write what? It is acute. Hepatitis B infection with high severity. With high severity. Got it? Right? Because this is positive. Next case, same. Number three case. If you see number three, the case is different here. Uh, see. This is positive. Infection here. Infection is positive. M ne G ho gaya. So that is chronic. So chronic hepatitis plus again E body. E means same. Severity pattern is very high. So that is chronic hepatitis B infection with high severity. High severity. Got it? Nice. I hope you understood very well now. Yeah. Now next. Next condition. See careful. HPS AG only HPS AG is positive, right? Infection is there. Infection is definitely there. G agya, uska matla chronic. E antigen is not there, but what we have? Antibody is formed. E means enemy. Enemy ka antibody form ho to kya matla hai? Sa kam ho gaya. Uska severity kam ho gaya. Enemy ka antibody form karke ko neutralize kar gaya. So severity kam ho gaya. Oh. What else goes down? Your replicative pathogenicity, everything goes down. That means this is also a case of chronic hepatitis B infection with low severity. So see, it makes significant, right? So when giving diagnosis to the patient, high severity, low severity gives a lot of uh, information for doctors who's treating, also for the patient, okay? So remember, so low severity. Now another picture. What is the other picture now? Uh, HPSH is negative, fifth case is negative, but already antibody is formed. Antibody is formed means patient is already recovered or vaccinated, right? Recovered or vaccinated. So now it's recovered or vaccinated. So how to say it's recovered or vaccinated? Because see here, anti-HBC was also positive. IgM or G doesn't matter, but it's already antibody form ho chuka hai, but antibody is formed. That means what was infection ta, that now he had infection and then he got recovered, right? So the patient is recovered. Okay. Anti-HPS agya, antibody against the surface antigen agya. That means yes or no, no, no infection. So it is recovered, no infection. So it's recovered. Okay. Now, next case, last case, last uh, type of case which you can have in the question is uh, sixth case. Uh, HPS is negative. That means no infection. Infection nahi hai. But um, uh, HB anti HPS ta. So it's called say here. See HPS is positive. That means no infection. But vaccinated or recovered. That we have to know. Uska o sub negative ta. Say everything is negative, negative, negative. Iska matlab kya hai? Patient ki infection nahi hua hai. He has taken what? Vaccination. So vaccinated. That's it. Isn't it easy? Very easy. You are not allowed to make mistake in this question because it's going to make a big difference. So PG exam or NEET exam, this will make a big difference. So don't forget. This is, uh, I'm sure this will be taught in your medicine also, but still, you know, you have to know it now itself. And there are some special genes and uh, interpretation. If you see, there's something called X gene. Uh, this is usually determines the carcinogenicity of the virus. Excuse me. This determines the carcinogenicity of the virus. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. And we have pre-core mutant also. Pre-core mutant is basically what happened? In pre-core mutant, we have no HPEG antigen. So that means 
they are lucky. There is no severe one. There is no severe, uh, it's no severity. There is no severe. So that is found in Russia. pre core mutant we say. And there's an escape mutant. Escape mutant is, this is the situation. You know, if someone asks uh, in the blood, uh, sir, how come both HBS AG and plus anti HBS dono positive kaise aa sakta hai? What is that condition? HBS antibody bhi anti dono positive ka hai. When there is an escape mutant. Escape mutant matla, aapke HBS AG hai na, kya hota hai? Usko mutation hai. Usko hai se kya hota hai? You, it will be visible in your blood. Because the mutant variant also will be there. So that will be, if it doesn't disappear, it will, it will remain. It will remain in the blood. So both will be positive. Still persist even when the anti H base is there. That's what it is the mutant, escape mutant. Okay. Right. That's it. That's what the question. Escape mutant can be asked. Or simply S yes, everywhere. It's yes, yes, yes. Okay. Escape mutant determines based on S only. Pre core mutant tells about the E. This is the important question they can ask. Uh, and uh, X for personal change. Right. That's it. So that's all. This is about the hepatitis virus. So uh, we have come to the end. Uh, then the other RNA viruses will be in the other classes. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you guys understood. But yeah, please try to revise some questions, solve some questions. So automatically you will uh, uh, you will know how easy it is. Thank you.